All right, we got Dan Coop, and this is why Hulk versus Brawley isn't close. I'm not gonna hold you. Do I give this to? Do I give this to? I'm not gonna hold you, man. I gotta give this to Brawley, man. I mean, not Brawley, but Hulk. Hulk. I'm giving this one to Hulk. Because, bro, man. I, like I said, <laughs> I don't care for the superheroes like that. But, man, y'all putting them against these type of characters, man. Come on, man. Oh, easily winning. <laughs> but, you know, I'm trying to. You know, I, I like, you know, and like I said, I'm a Dragon Ball Z fan. But, bro, like I said, I'm not finna sit here and act fake and, like, say, oh, no, nah, probably win. Nah, bro. Hulk easily beat him. Clobbering all day. <laughs> not even close. It's a great Marvel Dragon Ball matchup. Two giant rage monsters with incredible strength. When we actually take a look at it, what is going to come out on top and win? And really, is this fight even close? This fight ain't even close, man. Hulk, I'm giving it to Hulk. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Brawly. I like you, but you is not that guy against him. Let's get into it. Now, let me tell you, there's one thing the Hulk is. Well, the Hulk is strong. So strong, in fact, there have been several moments where Hulk has been fighting against another dude. I, 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 I just dislike the fact that he is this strong, man. I'm like, man. <laughs> God, I'm trying to find ways to like, I was trying to find some type of way for the Hulk, man. Like, bro, it got to be some type of weakness. He got to have some type of weakness, bro. Like, he got to. The only thing I got is like, don't he got like a limiter? Like, he gets like transfer into the hope and then like eventually he like where I but like I said it's been a while so I know all type of other you know versions of him and all that but let's let's go and each time he's been shaking the entire world with his punches the whole world causing earthquakes around the world there have been other times where Hulk is generating enough power to hold back a planet destroying threat or strong enough to support the weight of a whole star during his world breaker phase well hulk was so powerful that first off none of the avengers could even get close to him much less stop him and second he was so powerful that he was threatening to level manhattan and destroy the entire east coast with each step that he took another time when he was on sakar the planet was threatening to break apart rip right in two and so hulk just decided to jump on down there, dive to the center of the planet, and held the planet together. And then another time, while Hulk was back in his World Breaker phase, he was in a whole different dimension, and fighting against Red She-Hulk. And they were going at it. So much so, Hulk literally destroyed the planet they were on, and some of the surrounding moons, just from the shockwave of its attack. So, literally, a world breaker if there's one thing the big guy is known for its strength and he has a ton of it same with durability he can take countless punches from hercules can take an absurd amount of attacks from thor can battle against sentry or sometimes even several of those guys all at once and not go down just refuse to quit and all these guys are packing planetary level strength too probably way way more than that if we're being honest and it's not like hulk is limited mm. to just that either he's taken magical energy that was said to be a hundred times stronger than hercules's strongest punch he's taken energy attacks that can easily destroy planets and if anything <laughs> ever does injure him well hulk can almost immediately heal from it like just in an instant it's even so much so that a future version of the Hulk, Maestro, implied that he could heal and return to life if he was literally reduced to a fine powder. And as the immortal Hulk, well Hulk is literally that, immortal. Even if you do manage to kill him, which is dang near impossible, his healing factor is one of the best in comics. Well, Hulk will just come back from death itself. He's literally on killable but then there's broly an elite saiyan who was born with extraordinary potential for power even as a baby 
his power was off the charts and easily surpassed Prince Vegeta. His power shocked and scared King Vegeta. So Broly was exiled. The king feared that Broly would one day challenge his son for the throne, become a danger to the universe itself in the process. In exile, he was raised by his father, until he was finally rescued 48 years later by members of the Frieza Force. Looking for revenge, he was forced to fight against Goku and Vegeta. Broly is incredibly powerful. Frieza, Goku, Piccolo, all of them recognize his power levels and remark on just how powerful he is. Goku even said that Broly was much stronger than him. This was before Goku was able to activate Ultra Instinct. And he also said that Broly might actually be stronger than Beerus. And considering that Beerus is legit the most powerful god of destruction out there, that's a pretty hefty statement. And here's the kicker. Broly is able to grow and adapt as the fight goes on, becoming much stronger, faster, and more skilled as the fight <laughs> goes on. And as Broly transforms, going from wrathful to Super Saiyan, and especially to legendary Super Saiyan, well, his power just increases astronomically. In fact, Broly should comfortably scale above Vegeta, someone who's blown up dimensions, overpowered both Future Trunks and Goku Black, even managed to press Jiren for a little while. Broly is easily more powerful than Vegeta. He also scales above Frieza, although not necessarily Black Frieza. I'm gonna say not Black Frieza, now, bro. Like if we going by this one, then yeah, Frieza eating them hits. Frieza is eating them licks. He ain't even in guard for I mean, his um, gold, whatever. But at this point, Frieza had perfected his gold form. He could destroy planets with just well, he his was finger, in gold form. and Broly showed that he was well above him. And he did that by beating the ever-loving crap out of him. Heck, Broly even scales above Goku outside of Ultra Instinct. And by that point, Goku had threatened to destroy whole universes in some of his fights. Broly was still well above him. It took Goku and Vegeta becoming Super Saiyan Gogeta to even begin to catch up with Broly in power, then Super Saiyan Blue to begin to actually overpower him. So yeah, Broly is easily one of the strongest fighters in the verse. And while Broly has some absolutely amazing feats that we can draw on here, like I said, he managed to overpower and completely beat up Goku, Vegeta, and Frieza, I want to jump into when Broly fought Super Saiyan Gogeta, and when they shattered the very fabric of reality. Broly and Gogeta were so powerful that they surpassed, or basically broke, the boundaries of the universe, transporting them to an alternate dimension. In that dimension, where well, they were both throwing out reality-shattering attacks, mm -hmm and smashing the walls of space. Mm -hmm. Then they crumble this alternate dimension and end up back on Earth. Basically, Broly's power was too intense and too much for the universe itself to handle, which is how he was able to shatter reality. With feats like that, it means that Broly is a low multiversal level being with speed 148 nanillion times faster than light, and striking power great enough to shatter reality itself. Broly is a threat so powerful that you can directly compare him to someone like Beerus, who still, to this day, is considered to be seriously more powerful than both Goku and Vegeta. But this is the Hulk we're talking about here. The Hulk. And not just that, but we're treating it as composite Hulk too. Hulk is able to shatter dimensions with his punches. He's punched straight through time before. He's even shook the whole multiverse and shaken an infinite number of dimensions. When Hulk stops holding back and his true rage takes over, well, he is truly something else. Even with just his World War Hulk and World Breaker Hulk forms, 
Well, he's absolutely crazy powerful. In fact, while Hulk was fighting his <laughs> ex-wife, the Red She-Hulk, he unleashed an attack so powerful that just the shockwave from the strike was enough to destroy the planet, kill countless characters, and ended up obliterating. I knew it was gonna be. I knew Hulk, Hulk gonna win there, bro. Hulk gonna win there. Everything around him destroyed the dark dimension with the shockwave of the hit. He can match up against the Sentry in this. Sentry, bro. Sentry now, but Sentry, you know, he always, you know, what I'm saying, he be. He's strong, but then he he's like he he's like he easily. I, I don't I don't want to say that. Form a guy he's who easy. can one shot Celestials and defeat Molecule Man. And while you can argue that Sentry was holding back this whole time, so was the Hulk. That's where we get him destroying everything, which is the shockwave of his strikes. Because Hulk finally decided to stop holding back. Hulk is able to stand up to King Thor when he had the entire Odin force on his side. Basically, Thor was a high outer versal level being and Hulk was able to match up to him. I'm not even kidding here. Even with just an incomplete version of the Odin force. Well, he managed to fight against Null, who was basically his only equal at the time. Null, the guy who was able to rip the century in half. Then he also beat Mythos, who was wielding the full power of Yggdrasil, the tree which is everything, and has roots and branches in all that is, and encompasses all the timelines throughout the multiverse. And that was when Thor didn't even have a full connection to the Odin Force. Thor's beat Phoenix Force Moon Knight. He has all the same powers as Odin himself. He killed Galactus. He fought against the Black Winter. Thor is comfortably high outer versal here. Hulk was evenly matching against him. Even with a gigantic hole in his body, Hulk was still smashing him. Then he also fought the one below all, literally the embodiment of all the destruction and hate in the multiverse in the opposite side of the one above all, the supreme ruler of the multiverse. Hulk manages to stand up to him. Then the one below all also technically empowers the Hulk with the green door. It's what makes him immortal and unkillable. And it's just absolutely broken. Yeah, Hulk absolutely goes crazy when you actually stop and take a look at it. He's comfortably one of the strongest and most powerful heroes of all time. And even for as powerful as Broly is, I don't think Broly has a shot at winning here. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like I said, I give this one him the hope, bro. I, I do not see Broly beating this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But I, I, I don't know how y'all is. Bro, you just a, you just a Dragon Ball Z hater, bro. Bro. Um, I guess they're going to say I'm a hater because I'm going with the Hulk. Wow. Hulk is taking this one. Hulk wins. But what do y'all think? Sound I give Hulk that win, bro, man. I ain't going to hold you. Hulk easily being that dude. Yeah, I don't want to say nothing else, though, but, you know, because they, 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 they probably going to think I'm a... Uh, a hater. <laughs> but, yeah, you already know. Link them out, all that good stuff, man. But it's time. Let's see if I can get this game thing started now, bro.